What's going on, guys? Gilly Del Trez here, one half of the Geek Tastic duo and creator of Galactic Rodents of Mayhem, currently crowdfunding on Indiegogo. It's an anthropomorphic love letter to 80s and 90s Saturday morning cartoons. And I'm joined with Hero Geek, Ronald Christian, creator of Paragon Prime, the world's greatest and truest superhero, coming soon to Indiegogo. All right, guys, we got a great treat here. We have Josh Howard, who decided to stop on by and talk about his amazing looking comic called T-Bird and Throttle. What's going on, Josh? Oh, not much. Glad to be here, guys. Awesome, awesome. So T-Bird and Throttle was actually one of the very first um, books that I had seen on on Indiegogo. Um, one of the very first ones, you know, along with a couple of others. Um, and I remember really loving um, the way that it looked. Um, I had even contacted, I don't know, I don't know if you remember, I, I think I contacted you about doing my comic um, on, on Instagram, yeah. I think it was, a while ago. Right. Right, right. I was like, oh, I really like this art style. Would be perfect for what I'm trying to do. But yeah, obviously, we're busy with your book, so you know, I completely understand. Um, but yeah, I went ahead. I had missed the first couple of, uh, of 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 campaigns, but I went ahead and bought them on Comicsology. Okay. And and like I I loved it. This is great stuff. I really like the uh, the way the, this book. So yeah, and when you you know come out with issue three, I got the tier that that gives me all the other ones, the previous ones physically. So I'm excited to get that. I, I, I see that you're sending them out as we speak like today and like, right? Is it ready in fulfillment mode? Yeah. I, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I packed books all day, all day long today. So yeah, they're, yeah. they're going out. How, yeah. How's that been, um, you know, fulfillment mode and uh, co with what's going on now? I mean, and of course the state of the industry and comics, like how does it feel as a creator that, you have a you have four hundred something backers, five hundred something backers. You have your backers, and you're getting these books ready for people who are looking forward to comics when they can't get out and and, and you know grab a comic. Man, I tell you, like this whole situation, it's been almost one of those things where, like, you know, looking back, I was kind of frustrated with the industry, you know, with like not getting any. I like, got been published for years through Image and stuff, but then mm -hmm. once I finished my last book, I was having trouble getting jobs anywhere. Like, no mm -hmm. one would give me time of day, so oh. that kind of forced me to go go my own way. And now here we are years later and like the guys who've gone their own way are the ones set up to like get the books out. Whereas everyone else is struggling. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you bring a real interesting point. Now you mentioned you've been published. You did some stuff with image comics. You've been published. And what troubles me, because again, I'm a writer. I don't have the cachet of, a, of, of great artwork behind my book that I do myself. I have to hire an artist to, to create my vision. My idea was always like, let me pitch something to get it published. Um, and that has been, a, <laughs> that, that's been, that's been almost mission impossible. And it's only until I started crowdfunding my books where I started getting more attention and started building, slowly building my audience. I'm still not on, even on your level, but I'm getting up there. Now, my question is you were in the industry, you, you, you have published work. What troubles is, what troubles me is you're saying that you couldn't find a job and I'm seeing artwork here that is, is outstanding. It's How phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah, like It's phenomenal. It has the DNA embedded in this artwork is what I've seen growing up as a kid. You know, I'm an '80s kid. You know, bleed into the '90s. I mean, it's all right here. And, and wh why? Why is it that you feel you weren't able to get that kind of uh, those kind of jobs or whatnot? What, what's going on? What was your perspective on what maybe we don't know? It well, the I mean, industry? that's a good question because as far as I knew, I didn't have any kind of bad blood between anybody. Um, I didn't have any kind of flare ups or nothing like that. Um, mm -hmm. So it was something I struggled with for a while. Like, why can't I get any traction, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it wasn't until, I guess, the last couple of years when things have come out about things that are going on behind the scenes with certain publishers that mm -hmm. I started putting things together and noticing some names pop up that I may have dealt with. And so I don't know if this is the content of my books. Mm -hmm. My last book, Dead at 17, I don't know if you're aware of it. It's a horror series. It's a horror, yeah. But, but it also has a lot of um, Christian themes in it, mm -hmm. um, some pretty blatant stuff. Um, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. I, I, it's hard to say. Okay, um, what Christian themes? I mean, because I, I have one book that I did. It's called Lair. I crowdfunded that. I mean, I, I would be lying if I said yeah. there's no spiritual themes in there. I mean, I don't go – I mean, uh -huh. there's, a, there's a way where I, I always – 
put everything at the mercy of the storytelling. I don't force anything. I just let it flow organically. So what is it within your story that what are these Christian themes that people are getting offended by that? I mean, I kind of find that maybe that could be something within that book that you feel alienated you. Um, getting jobs. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I always put story first. I mean, mm. that's priority. And, mm. but my goal was for Dead at 17 was to tell a horror story because, mm. you know, when you watch horror, I, I love the horror genre, but the thing about it exactly. that always gets me is that, you know, is that, um, it's a lot of it's very bleak. Um, mm -hmm. it's no all, hope, right? No it, hope, right? <laughs> the, 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 the devil is the star, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. basically. And so yeah. I thought, well, I wanted to show that there's a good side in this fight, you know, and wow. uh, it's it's sort of like, you know, sort of how Ash in Evil Dead has uh, a more comical yeah. take. But, you know, like if Ash actually had, was connected to something on the good side in his mm -hmm. fight, which I guess there's sort of some of that in, in the, the TV show, but. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so that's where I was coming from. And, and it's a slow burn through the mm -hmm. course of the series. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the end, you're basically in Revelation, though, as, right. as far as the story oh, so goes. You're, you're like, a, you know, the biblical apocalypse and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I taught from a very certain perspective um, mm -hmm. uh, from these, you know, these characters. Um, so yeah. you're not getting the full picture, but you do see some pretty blatant mm -hmm. stuff by the end. Well, so. Josh, you're in good company because both me and Gilly are Christians. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. No. Cool. No, well, here, well, here's the thing, and this is why I want to touch on because I, I'm that guy, Josh. I'm that Christian guy that grew up on horror in the weirdest way. My dad would always watch horror movies, you know. And I'm a little kid. I'm supposed to be in bed. I, I'd, I'd be awake. I'd see what's dad watching, and I'd be creeping behind. He wouldn't even know I'm awake, and I'm watching just like these craziest B-rate movies, horror movies, and th it stuck with me, right? What I'm trying to get at is I love horror. And as a Christian, my thing, also, like you said, it's bleak. There's no hope. Or I always wanted to try. I wanted to try to attach a, a spiritual spin on things. And what alarms me is that out of a lot of the horror stuff that I've seen, I rarely come across, I don't know, Christological themes. If it isn't something that's dealing with demon possession, kind of, right? It, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to find maybe spiritual horror, if that could even be a genre. So where I see Dead 17 maybe coming in, um, and I, I'm going to have to buy that book because I, I now that I'm knowing more about you, I definitely want to read it. And I got I just got to see what's what's offending people or what could have offended someone in the industry to just want to, like, you know, blacklist you in a way. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I read the first couple of issues of T-Bird and Throttle, and there's some stuff in there. Like, I know, Josh, you poke a little bit fun at, at SJWs in, in – in a couple of places on the book. So I, I love that stuff, but I know that, that <laughs> people might get triggered by that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, T-Bird's definitely meant to be a little more topical um, uh -huh. uh, for sure. To, it's always meant to reflect sort of what's going on because mm -hmm. I think superheroes have changed because uh, the world what's going on for the, for the worse. Mm -hmm. So I think T-Bird by default had to, it was meant to be like the, the, the counterweight to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a good point. Yeah, like you're reflecting kind of how the direction society is going, but you're trying to say, hey, hold up. There's still redemption here, right? It's almost like if you look at ca cancel culture, right? Hey, because of whatever happened two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, even me, God, you know, God forbid if I get published, they're going to be hunting down tweets that I made, I don't know, 2018 or something. And it's <laughs> like they'll be willing to crucify me. But it's like you're really going to go on what was said back then but not really take the full story. And that what T Bird and Throttle, if it's a man that was disgraced, but he's you know trying to earn his redemption, we all have that right to, mm -hmm. to, to receive the redemption, right? I mean, who could judge who, right? Yeah. Um, I think that it opens up, and when we talk about superheroes, it opens up a, an interesting paradigm as far as bringing a superhero construct into that type of uh, ideology. And I think yeah. that's where T Bird and Throttle is meant for today, and it shows you by the backings and how successful your first campaign was, or uh, your second campaign was. So. It, how many? I mean, you got a few issues going on here. What's the the end game for T Bird and Throttle, uh, for what what you got now? Uh, this arc is intended to be four issues, <clears throat> so I'll be crowdfunding the fourth issue here pretty soon. Nice. Um, um, so that'll wrap it up for for this arc. I mean, I have a lot more planned. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> what's that? I know how that feels. You have a lot planned. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I think this is a big chunk of the story. This is the big, you know, this is, um, this sets up, um, mm -hmm. you know, of course, the origin, everyone's, who everyone is. Um, 
but uh, you're gonna get enough meat here that it's gonna feel like a complete story. Like you're not gonna feel robbed at the end my, of four issues. Oh, so my, FYI, by, by my the closure. way, um, I am completely in love with Throttle. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thor yeah. Thor tell us about Throttle. Yeah, and T-Bird. Tell us, a tell us yes. a little about T-Bird and tell us about Throttle, right? And maybe how they kind of got on the same sheet of music as far as crime fighting maybe or... Well, uh, do you want the uh, in-universe or the outside, or the real world sort of story? <laughs> we want whatever the whatever the author wants to give us. You do okay. law if you have to. We're here for it. <laughs> well, T-Bird, you know, he's basically meant to evoke heroes of the past. I mean... Visually, he's sort of a mix of Dark Knight Returns Batman mixed with Optimus Prime, mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit of Mr. Fantastic. Um, but I mean, the idea of, this, of the kind of the whole story, kind of like what you guys are talking about with, um, you know, cancel culture or whatever have you, is that the old heroes, if they were drawn or portrayed as they were back then as today, they would be canceled. Like they would, they would not be, you know, welcome in today's society. Mm -hmm. because of their traditional values, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they have to be changed by the modern the publishers today. They have to adapt them to be, you know, palatable for the modern consumer, you know, yeah. quote unquote. So T-Bird is meant to be sort of a, this hero who evokes an earlier time, um, who is sort of, you know, from an earlier time. And you see, of course, in the, in the, in the book, the world is, you know, definitely changed and wants to bring him down. Um, as far as Throttle goes... Um, she, uh, so I've been building this story for almost 20 years now. Like, right. I just, when I first thought of it, you know, building on it, you know, you know, uh, there's been a couple times in the past when it was, had scheduled to come out and it didn't work out for various reasons, mm -hmm. but all those were blessings in the skies because this allowed me to really, you know, yeah. develop the world better. And yeah, throttle as she is, is in this, like startle, the character did not exist in any of the previous drafts of the last 20 years until 2017. Okay. Wow. And I, I, I thought her up kind of, even when I wrote the scripts for all four issues, she was not in them. It wasn't until I wrote the zero issue um, that she, I needed the character to fill a void. Mm -hmm. And it kind of opened up everything. And I wrote, this is what the piece I've been missing. And so I went back to my scripts and I, I she magically somehow fit in <laughs> and uh that's yeah, awesome. it was <laughs> yeah it yeah was a real uh, thing, from so. from what i've read you know I, i've read issues um zero one and two um she's she's essential to 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 the story yeah she really is yeah that's why it's crazy that i didn't it was she wasn't there i mean i don't know it's just one of those things that there's there's just a certain I guess if, if you're a writer, you know that there's certain things that happen mm -hmm. that you just can't explain, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that kismet. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever that was, I'm glad it happened. So, well, yeah. well here's the thing. you said that she just came in in your 2017 drafts or when you were redrafting yeah. and, it, and she kind of. So, yeah. was it always T Bird? And then, like, this kid throttle came in and she was throttle and it was just rang T Bird and throttle and you're like, ching, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, it was always T Bird and Throttle, but uh -huh. the Throttle. So the Throttle that it was always was is not in place yet. Ah, uh, interesting. I think I think I know where this is going. I'm just I'm not gonna say anything though, but I, I've oh, read enough boy. to know where this is going. So oh boy, you should, you, yeah, most people should be able to figure it out. And there's yeah. plenty of old artwork out there that people yeah. should be able to. Excellent. Yeah. Well, issue three should give you kind of a just the cover alone should give you a hint. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. Well, the artwork is top notch. Um, you could definitely see the homage to the old superheroes. Now, when you say that T Bird, uh, you know, he evokes the the superhero of the days of yore, and then you know, what what is it about this like this the modern consumer that evolved? I mean, I always thought like a one reason why the comic book industry is dying is because you know we're not getting new readers where we should be getting new readers, and you know we get like thirty thousand mm -hmm. variant covers. And, you know, it's like you got to buy, you know, there's so many, it's like, it's, there's, it's hard to get a continuity. It's like, you're doing this mini series here, this mini series here, this and that. And it's just, it's so much fluff where there, you, like you said about me, we, I hardly feel closure with any of the, uh, uh, of what's coming out. So what's what do you think is going on with the modern consumer or, or, or even the state of affairs as far as superheroes and, and comics really? 
Well, I mean, it's something that I think has probably been hammered, you know, ad nauseum by plenty of other, you know, people on the scene now. But it's, it's of course, they're making comics for an audience that doesn't buy comics or doesn't care, has no sense of the history. Yeah, um, exactly. They're ignoring, they're, they're ignoring their primary audience. <clears throat> And like a good parallel for this, mm-hmm. I just you know, I've been thinking about is, I don't know if you guys, I, I'm a big action figure collector. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, we, both me and Gailey collect action figures. Yeah, so. we, we, okay, we cool. Well, you know, it's like you know the action figure market is sort of dwindled, oh, but there's man. still a very hard, it's still a very hardcore collector base, right? And oh so yeah. So you see the companies are starting to tailor towards those collectors. They're making the old properties. They're either re- remaking them or re-releasing the old stuff. Or, yeah, you know, I'm you know, like, which I just got my Empire Strikes Back, you know, Luke Skywalker, Star Wars Black action figure like two days ago. So yeah. Oh, I've been looking for that. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just got the uh, Ghostbusters retro figures. Oh, sweet. Out. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. All right, since you, so, guys yeah. got, since you guys got figures, I got to throw one there. I just recently got the He-Man um, was it like the redesign they did? It's the Super Seven. They're just like re- all the basic classic He Man's. They redid them for the. Uh, yeah. the yeah, so I had to get He Man and Skeletor. But nice. okay, oh, so- dude, I've got, I've got, I've got all those. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. Yeah, Josh, you were saying. Yeah, so you know, like, there's that that whole mentality hasn't really infected infected the toy industry, uh, <laughs> like it has, you know, yeah. comics other entertainment. So they're still they know where they have to get their money from the collectors, the people mm-hmm. that are grew up with toys, you know, mm-hmm. you know, so like the comics need to realize the same thing. They need to go after the people who've been there, who are always going to be there. Well, mm-hmm. unless, well, they're chasing them away now, but um, oh. yeah, that's what needs to change. Well, you know? this is, this is where I think the, the um, Indiegogo crowdfunding um, thing works because only the people who really believe in comics are going to put this kind of money and patience into this. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I've backed twenty something comics. How, how many have you had uh, backed, Gilly? Uh, I actually got like in the fifties. Yeah, he's in the fifties. Oh wow! Yeah, so, nice. I mean, we believe in this model so much that we don't mind waiting for a quality product. I mean, it it, it means more this way than it does me go, just going to a comic book shop and picking up a twenty four issue, whatever. Like, oh well, this looks kind of good, whatever. But this, you invest in the concept you read about the book you get excited for it you're you willing to put you know um money into it and then when you get it it's special like i every time i get a book i set out time to read it like this is my time to read this book and it is like an event you know what i mean and i love that about the, this model well, well if i'm being honest i think for a long time i sort of felt like I mean, this is going back way back that uh, the uh, comics needed to be more like that anyway to where when a series came out or a graphic novel what happened to be it needed to be an event where they're constantly when they're cramming out issue after eight monthlies where mm-hmm. you know where and like where you have like three or four spider-man books or batman books like mm-hmm. you remove anything unique or special you're just p- putting it out to put it out yep. and so then you have when you have a movie come out no one knows what you'll buy because there's just a glut of stuff mm-hmm. You know, that, that was my, when I, when I, um, a Harry Potter movie comes out, everyone knew exactly what to buy, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I think it needs to be treated more, yeah. you know, in that, in that like the way crowdfunding is going to where when it comes out as an event and you know, it's um, time and effort was put into it. it yeah. It's, ex- it's out, exciting. You know? It's, it's exciting. I mean, I, I got excited yeah. for it. I do. All right. You like, yeah. it's like you go shoulder to shoulder on a journey with the creator. You're seeing what's mm-hmm. coming out. As far as you, you get, you get excited for when they post a new a, a new page yeah. or an update, and you retweet it. Like, oh my gosh, look, this is gonna be awesome! I can't wait to read this. You know, it's like a community thing too. Yeah, 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 for sure. One thing about the industry that you said, Josh, um, and I feel because again, I grew up on the spinner racks. I, I mean, after church on Sundays, I, we go to the local deli, and I would have to struggle between a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic, uh, Daredevil, Batman, Spider Man, what have you, and it, it, you know, it's like mom's like you'd only get one. Even though I think they were like a dollar at the time, whatever. You only get one. So you know, you pick one. You read that story. You might get you introduced to like a, a second rate villain, but it was just amazing how he challenged the main hero. Yeah. But you're saying that now everything is so like it's it's redundant almost. Where you got like sensational Spider Man, amazing Spider Man, web of Spider Man. It's just like for me, as much as I love Spider Man, Batman, all the you know, there was a major disconnect for me. 
as far as as comics and mainstream. So I was watching more movies, you know, yeah. more TV shows, that kind of thing. And I think now with crowdfunding, and like you said, how you're tailoring, I think me and you are, are in unison here, because uh, with my Galactic Order of Mayhem project, my idea was, okay, listen, I, I ain't trying to get the new kids now. I, I said, I'm trying to get the dudes like me that grew up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or grew up on that goodness and reinvigorate that through a new story. So it's not like, I mean, you can reboot Ninja Turtles as much as you want. You could reboot Power Rangers. But it's like, okay, let's create something fresh with that spirit, right, where you still could, you know, it's something mm -hmm. familiar, something that you enjoy, nostalgic, but equally fresh in its own right. So that way these hardcore collectors or dads like me could show these stories to our kids. Yeah, yeah. For a new wave of action figure craze. You know what I mean? Like yeah, where people right, are right. crazy for T-Bird and Throttle yeah. figures or Paragon Prime figures or Galactic Mortis and Mayhem figures. I mean, there's a market there. Yeah. I, really, I think, like you said, you got to cater that market because they're going other places. Um, so I'll Yeah, I'll tell you another thing is that with crowdfunded comics, you get the same creative team like all the time. Like if, if I'm reading, you know, Spider-Man comic and I like the art in the first three issues, but then by issue four, they change artists to a guy that I don't like. I'm like, I don't like this guy's art. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna stop reading it. But with this model, usually you get the same creative team for a long time, you know, the same artist, the same writer. So you're not changing it up. And I like that. Good point, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the other problem too is uh, this: the endless rebooting to number one. Mm -hmm. Like I remember as a kid, oh, God, you know, yeah, when, I picked, when I when I picked up X Men, it was like in the two hundreds, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, there's no way you could possibly catch up. But a part of it was that that's what it was exciting. You're jumping into something that had been going all this time, and it was like, oh wow, I want to find out what's going on. I want to find yeah. out what happened before this. You, you know, and like <laughs> there was there was a history there, you know. And now there's there's like what there's a new number one every year for some mm -hmm. of these titles, you know. And it's just like yeah. nothing means anything. Marvel, yeah. Mar Marvel is obsessed with with that, you know, renumbering yeah. and relaunching like Captain Marvel like six, 16 times or whatever. Yeah, it, it would work maybe if there was a method behind it where you have some like you're gonna restart, but you restart and like you know, Josh said you get to like two hundred again, so we can see like oh, this is this new arc. It, it, it's its own thing. It's up to you know, th there's a sense of well, yeah, there that you yeah. know it could be missing something, but they. They're just they're regurgitating it too much, and there's it's like yeah. you've already seen this already. I mean, there's nothing new. Well, the, the thing is though, like back when DC was doing the Rebirth thing, they continued with the numbering of the tech, Detective Comics and Action Comics. I mean, there were new stories mm -hmm. starting from scratch, but the numbering didn't change, and that's that was pretty cool. Thanks. <laughs> so I got a couple of questions for you about T-Bird and Throttle. Now, I hope you are planning to come out with a collected graphic novel after all four issues are done, right? <clears throat> I'm Right now I'm evaluating possibly doing that for this next campaign. Mm -hmm. um, right. Doing issue four and then a graphic novel that includes all four mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Um, just because otherwise I'm going to have to reprint one through three or zero through three again. Mm -hmm. And I'm... And if, if, if the, doing the graphic novel now is more cost effective, I'm going to do it that way. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. Mm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'd for sure, I probably, since I, I missed out on the first few issues, I'd definitely probably do the a collection of the first four. Um, just, be, I, just because for me, one thing about the monthly model that kind of fell off for me, it's like, you know, I have your subscription at the comic shop and you read issue one 30 days later or whenever you get to issue two. You know, it's like almost like what was going on again? What was like the you know, <laughs> kind of like reread the first issue, then go into the second issue, then you're there, then you wait until the you know the ne and the next issue comes out, and it it was it was choppy. You know, the reading experience was choppy. So when I get the trade for me, I just read in one chunk, and I get you know, it's almost like you're reading like season one or something like that. I just feel like it, it, it's for me. It just I don't know. I just like it better. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and that's my yeah. my my thing is um. More, more, more pages. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, rest assured, when it, when you do collect it on the graphic novel, I'm gonna probably get back that too. So, you know. So there's oh, something for the collectors. Yeah. yeah. For the collectors. Definitely. Um. One more question. Now, Josh Howard here is a huge fan of a show called Twin Peaks. I've never seen it, but I see that he has a lot of tweets about it. I've seen it a lot on his Instagram. I've seen it a lot on Twitter. And I kind of curious why is this show so amazing? 
Um, man, that's hard to put in. Uh, that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> Because it's it's one of those things that's not for everyone, uh -huh. uh, but those who get it like really get into it, you know. Uh -huh. um, it, it came along when I was I think maybe twelve or thirteen, mm -hmm. and it, it just it it just um, it captured my attention like nothing ever has. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's again it's hard to put into words. It's, um, <laughs> it's yeah, I've, I've, I've seen yeah. stuff about it. And I've seen videos yeah. about it and read stuff about it, and and I I just get end up get, getting more confused than than understanding what it is. It's just a really unique thing, apparently. Um, I've thought about checking it out, but I haven't yet. So, well, the, the surface level is that it's about you know a, a, a prom queen who's murdered, and uh, you know FBI agent coming to town to investigate, and mm -hmm. it's just you always hear about oh it's about the quirky townspeople, but it's that's the surface level. Of Twin Peaks, it gets much deeper, and there's a whole other world. Oh my god! Um, that's that comes. I now, mean, it's, is it? Super, I heard of. Uh -huh. Is it supernatural in nature, or? Uh, uh, no, no, yes. no, no, no! No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's you can well, you can assume things, you can you can allude to that, right? That's not giving away a spoiler, right? I mean, you can allude some to things, that. Right? Well, there is debate about that. Some of it seems okay. to be open to interpretation, but I mean, oh. I think you know there are certain things that it's you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone should experience it for themselves. Again, if you're watching the, if you go back and watch the uh, the original fir first two seasons, mm -hmm. um, they're going to seem, you know, might seem a, a slightly dated by today's drama standards. Yeah, but at the time, it was re revolutionary. It's good you stuff, know, right? Um, I, I heard of Twin Peaks. I re like I, I know of it, and I remember hearing about it growing up. Um, this one kind of missed my radar a bit, but what you just said, I never, th I didn't know it was like that. Like a, it sounds like kind of like horror ish, like investigating a murder. Um, <laughs> that might be lead into supernatural. It kind of has like it's kind of Ki Stephen King ish from what I'm hearing, or King esque. Um, the, I might want to check this out because that's right up my alley. The, yeah, there are things in Twin Peaks that have that have frightened me more than any other horror movie I've ever oh, seen. Oh man! Oh wow! Really said enough. I gotta see if this is on Netflix. <laughs> you said enough, man. It, it is. is. Seasons. Oh, it is. It's on oh, Netflix. The, the first two seasons. Oh, that's the, it. The, the, I need. The, yeah, the current season, the season from 2017 that came out uh, mm -hmm. on Showtime is, of course, you have to go through Showtime to get it, or Blu-ray, but. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so have also, you seen that as a fan? Have you, seen, have you seen that third season as a fan? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so so being that, because I'm the, I'm the type of guy, like, I love the originals, and then when you come out something dated years later, there's sometimes. Yeah, they, they try to do it with X-Files, and I don't know if it worked pretty very yeah, well. Did it work here? Oh, no, no. No, it didn't. It didn't work. <laughs> oh no, X Files. I wasn't reading about that. No, here's what. Here's my. Here's my view on it. So like, okay. there was also a movie after the original series. There was a movie called Firewalk with Me, uh, okay. that came out. You know, a year or two later, mm -hmm. um, and that's a completely different animal than the show is. Mm. Um, gotcha. The third season that came out on Showtime is a different animal, but not in a bad way. It's. Okay. Um, it's. It's it's brilliant. So oh, that's all. Brilliant. That's it. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So I, I I heard about that when I was young. I didn't know it was that. You know, I didn't know the premise. <laughs> Ninety ninety one. I must have been like, oh, uh, maybe nine ish, ten. So yeah, that was. But I'm gonna do my homework. You said it was on Netflix. That's the best news I heard to jump into something. <laughs> you know, early nineties. That's kind of like Stephen King ish. I'm I'm man. Josh, it made my day not only for your awesome and amazing comic book, for your views on um, superheroes and the state of the industry. And as a creator, there's a lot um, that I gel with, and, and I'm impressed, man. Uh, I hope nothing but great things for you. Yeah, and we both do. Your definitely. continued crowdfunding career. Yeah, but, and by, yeah. by the way, just live, you know, congratulations again. You picked up by Alterna. That's that's amazing. Good deal. On yeah, that. yeah. Cool. It's always good to yeah. get with a publisher. Alterna is um, for an indie publisher. They're definitely shaking things up, so pe more people could see T Bird and Throttle, which I think they should definitely uh, because it it almost feels as much. And man, you know what? It almost feels like as you as you said how hard it was for you to um, get work when you obviously prove yourself before, and your quality of work is is speaks for itself. It's like you're getting pushed out right it's almost like you know it's like okay the, he, we're not gonna make you trending we're not gonna put you in the limelight where you should be and you can't get any work but because of publishers like alterna 
uh, that are, that you know they they handpick these gems. You're gonna get a lot more people seeing T Bird and Throttle, which is gonna be great for you moving forward. This four issue guys, T Bird and Throttle, it's gonna be coming to a close, which is nice. You got a little closure, and we'll see from there what Josh Howard decides to do. If he's gonna continue that, or if you're gonna let that sit for a while, do another project, and then maybe come back to T Bird and Throttle in another arc. I mean, for for people who love comics and are are itching for something from the good old days, we got T Bird and Throttle with Josh Howard, man. Amazing stuff to look forward yep. to. Yep, can't wait to read it. Hey, Josh, thanks, guys. Any last words? Hey, I had a great time, guys. Uh, thanks for awesome. having me on. It was awesome. Yeah, no problem, man. It was a pleasure to have you. Awesome. We'll definitely want to bring you back after we've read the first uh, four issues of T-Bird and Throttle. I know Ron's going to be, you know, <laughs> he's all over. But once that uh, crowd, once you do that campaign for the um, the collection, the trade paperback, I'm definitely going to get on that. And I think we'll have a nice, nice little powwow on um, maybe what's to come and our thoughts on T-Bird and Throttle. And um, I think it'll be a cool little session there, something for us to look forward to as well. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome, guys. This has been the Geektastic Duo with Josh Howard, creator of T-Bird and Throttle. Check it out. Keep your eyes out. This is a good one, guys. Till next time, geek out. Geek out, guys. <laughs>